These are a couple of articles that were written in the Rogersville Review. Who is Summer Wells? Candace Bly, Summer's mother, described the tiny five-year-old girl on the missing posters and Amber Alert billboards. She went from Paw Patrol to My Little Pony, Candace said, then Elsa and Frozen, and then went to those weird Dracula Barbie dolls with the weird color hair and stuff. I think it's Monster High dolls. The idea to color her hair didn't come from the dolls, however. I dyed my hair, and she wanted her hair dyed too. I mean, what girl doesn't want to be like her mama? Candace said her daughter's interests varied. She just likes all kinds of stuff. She could sing the whole Frozen song. She likes Godzilla. Her dad or, daddy got her liking that one. When asked if it was the Eminem version or the original by Blue Oyster Cult, Candace said, I'm not sure. I don't listen to that rock and roll stuff. I listen to pure country and oldies. Although Summer appears extremely energetic in numerous videos of her on social media, Candace said Summer didn't rise with the sun. She likes to sleep in. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get her up for school. The youngest son does too. He'll sleep until noon if you let him. I mean, they all pretty much will. I think the second oldest son is the only one who will get up early. In the videos of Summer at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Kingsport, Summer is seen embracing one church member in particular, Sabbath school teacher Robin Lane. Everybody loves her up there. She always runs up to Robin. She loves Robin. Robin was her favorite person. At home, Summer is often seen in photos cuddling with the family's pets, both cats and dogs. She calls that one yucky, Candace said, pointing out one of the friendly dogs on the property. It was my oldest son's dog and he called it Lucky, but she called it Yucky. I don't know why. She's a very comical kid. Summer's angelic face and infectious smile, along with her tragic plight, have made her the subject of countless prayers and concerns of, of friends and complete strangers who try to reach out and help in some way. A woman who is friends with Grandmother Candy recently tried to raid, raise funds for the family with a GoFundMe account. I told her I don't care about no damn money. I don't want anybody's money. I just want my daughter back. That's what I keep trying to tell all these people. I don't need your money, your food, and all of that. We have what we need. I just want my daughter back home. That's all I want. People just want to keep giving. I don't want your money. Keep it. I can understand wanting to help, but I just want my daughter home, and I don't care about the money, Candace said. Summer Wells, missing since June 15th, is three feet tall and weighs 40 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. She was reportedly last seen wearing gray pants, a pink, out, pink shirt outside her home in the Beach Creek community. Any information regarding her whereabouts should be directed to the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office at 423-272-4848 or the TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND. This other article. A sad situation was made sadder last week when the Beach Creek household already missing Summer Wells lost their three brothers as well. Parents Donald Wells and Candace Bly confirmed this week that the Department of Children's Services removed the three boys from the home last Thursday for reasons not publicly disclosed. Summer Wells, of course, is the family's five-year-old girl who mysteriously vanished without a trace and was reported missing June 15th. Right now, it's not safe at my house, Donald Wells told the Kingsport Times News Monday. There's too much going on and people are getting crazier than hell. And right now, it's just not safe at my house. There's too much going on. Too many crazy people coming around to start stuff. We've had a few people come in the middle of the night. We had one, and I don't think he'll be coming back to our house anymore, though. The investigation into the dis disappearance of Summer Wells by the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, and the FBI continues. The Wells' normal way of life at 110 Ben Hill Road in Beach Creek does not. I really liked it, and then Summer got gone, Bly, Bly said, of the family's scenic mountain views. Now it's just not pretty anymore. Bly, who grew up in Wisconsin, and Wells, who's from Utah, met in Fayetteville, Arkansas before moving to Tennessee in 2009. Bly talked about the family background in an interview with the Review on July 18th. I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas, and the only reason why I ended up being raised in Wisconsin 
was because I was born with a hole between my heart and the four chambers and they flew me to Minnesota, Bly said. That's why all our family ended up residing there. But my mom's from Wisconsin. I left there when I was like 19. I jumped on the carnival in Pine City, Minnesota, right across the river. Actually, I was on the carnival circuit for a long bit, so I've been to different states and stuff. My mom, she was managing a hotel in Arkansas when I ended up in St. Louis and gotten stranded there. So she came and got me and I moved to Arkansas with her. And then I met Donnie's other family, his stepdaughters and stuff like that. And then I met him through his stepdaughters and then we just got together. Bly and Walls had their first child together in Arkansas. He was actually nine months old when we moved up here and he'll be 13 in September, Bly said of the move to Beach Creek, home to Donald's mother, Okay, wait. <laughs> he was actually nine months old when we moved up here, and he'll be 13 in September, Bly said of the move to Beach Creek, home to Donald's mother's family and Donald's ill mother. This was originally his mom's, Bly said of the home and the 11-acre property. Actually, I took care of her when, she went to, when he went to work. She had MRSA. It's some kind of disease. I guess everybody has a little bit of it in their bodies, but some people get it and it just overtakes their system. And after so many antibiotics, the antibiotics don't help no more because it's so gone. Because she was a Mormon, they believed in different beliefs and stuff. So they took her out of here. Her dad was a Mormon too. She said she was dying. She was pretty much on her deathbed and goes, well, one's coming into the world. Talking about Bly's second son at the time because I was pregnant with him and one's going out of the world. So she was pretty much saying that she was on her way out and he was on his way in, and that's how it happened too. Wells and Bly later had one more son and then their daughter, Summer. Now the Wells are left to wonder if they will be seeing any of their four, four children off to school when Hawkins County School begins for the 21-22 academic year on August 9th. I was hoping Summer was going to get to go to that school for her first year, she said about Kepler Elementary, where her boys had attended until it closed for good, along with McFeeters Bend Elementary at the end of the 21 school year. I love that school. They were so nice to the kids and me. The two schools were not, were not only Hawkins County's two smallest and two oldest, they were the two closest to the Wells Beach Creek home. With the closing of Kepler, the two older boys were moved to Hawkins Elementary this year, while the two youngest Wells children were set to be attending Joseph Rogers Primary. In fact, Summer already had an outfit picked out for her first day, the one everyone's come to know. That which she is wearing in the last known image of her, laying against two gallons of milk in the back seat of her grandmother's truck after a swim at Warriors Path State Park in Kingsport. The only outfit I had was her brand new one we got her to go to kindergarten. It was a suit, of course, pants and a sweater. I got it probably a week before, and it was still in mom's truck. It was the only change of clothes because we didn't plan on going swimming that day. So I just figured we'll change her out and put her in these. That way she'll be warm and won't freeze to death on the way home. Side note, remember she said if the windows were down, Summer would act like she was freezing before people say it wasn't cold that day. Sometime after that, the child was reporting missing to police, neighbors, friends, family. The impact was felt by many, including Summer's uncle Bob, grandma Candy's brother-in-law. The day he found out Summer was missing, he had to go to the hospital because he had a heart attack. Summer used to call him Uncle Booby because she couldn't say Bob, so she said Booby. Grandma Candy left Tennessee July 18th to be with her sister Linda, whose husband Bob was recently rehospitalized. He had to go back because they put a pacemaker and stuff like that. He quit smoking and because he's on oxygen. Aunt Linda called and said she needed help because he's getting too far. He can't even lift nothing up or move his fingers hardly anymore, so she had to go. My Aunt Linda's like 70, so they're up there in age. Grandma Candy splits her time between Tennessee and Wisconsin anyway, Bly said. She's been down here off and on for four years. She goes back up north because she has grandkids up there too. So six months, nine months, she goes back. She leaves her camper here. 
She wasn't supposed to leave actually until September, but she had to go back up there and help. Her doctor's appointment up there is October. Right after that doctor's appointment, she'll be back. Summer is the second person close to Grandma Candy to disappear without a trace. Her daughter and Candace's sister, Rose Marie Bly, went missing 12 years ago. According to the FBI, Bly was last seen leaving her residence in St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin, en route to Cushing, Wisconsin, a distance of five miles. Her car was recovered five days later in Grantsburg, Wisconsin, in a parking lot typically used by truck drivers to park their tractor trailers. This parking lot is approximately 30 miles from her residence. Candace was asked how her mother was handling the disappearance of two family members. Mom, she's okay. My sister has been gone for 11 or 12 years now, and it's hard on her. It's not at all easy. We just sit here and wonder because her story doesn't even make sense. She was on her way to meet her cousin at the bar and never made it to the bar. It was like two miles from her house. And then her car shows up a week later in Grantsburg with no fingerprints and no nothing on it, Bly said. The Polk County, Wisconsin Sheriff's Office and FBI still consider it an open case under investigation.